Good morning, everybody. Live from the servant from the for, for the service from Wakefield. From Wakefield, got some news later. I'll also have a, a good news to start right off with next week. We'll be back together at the church. So I have some further instructions. Got a little bit more staining to do. Uh, so I uh, want to get that done this week before it rains. So anyway, we'll, we will instruct a little bit more on that. But as we get started and everybody gets online here this morning and we get ready to sing and worship, um, let's not forget that what a beautiful summer we have and it's a great day. And uh, everybody get ready. We're going to stand in a minute. But first, we're going to pray. Lord, we thank you today for this wonderful day that you've given us. For each one that's with us online, will be with us online, will hear us later on during the day. Lord, there are many services going on, but we, as a church from Wakefield, we are committed, Lord, to do what you want us to do and go in the direction that you want us to go. Lord, united together and we stand. So Lord, we thank you today for everything. We thank you for all your great love and everything you're doing for us and in this service online for this time being. Lord, we are so thankful for everything you have kept us in these last months and you will keep us in the next month. So Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name and we love you so as well let's just start this morning let's uh, stand up if you can and stretch out if you can i'll see if i'm too high i'm not too high i'm great it's just wonderful and let's sing to start off with we'll just sing the chorus of bless the lord O my soul and then i'm going to give you our favorite scripture for offering and then we'll go right into everything else that's happening so let's sing the verse bless the lord O my soul Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Let's sing it one more time. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Maybe we should just sing it one more time. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship His holy name. Now, just before we sing it again, let's go, take time to think about what we're giving to the Lord this week, how we're giving to the Lord this week. Our verse we know is in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, that says, let each of one let each one gives first of all as he purposes in his heart it's a decision we make before and don't give it grudgingly or of necessity or because there's a need but we give with a, a cheerful we are a cheerful giver and we purpose in our heart to give back to the lord for the simple reason that we have tasted and seen that the lord is good Everybody knows how to, by this time, to give an offering to the church. But next Sunday morning, we'll be back together with a few restrictions. But we'll be back together, worshiping together again. So let's sing this song again. Uh, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And this time, as we sing it, we sang it a couple of times. I want you to notice something in the first part, or the first verse of this song or the chorus that we sang. It says, the first three lines, Oh my soul. I went offline, I'm back on. So I'm, here. I, I'm back online now, so everything is good. Uh, it says the first part of it is uh, an order. In other words, 
uh, to your soul. Soul, bless the Lord. And then the second part says, Oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. So it's like a positive response to an, a, an order or a command that we're given to our soul. So let's sing it that way this morning. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
So don't forget next week, Alive at 5. We're always alive at 5. That will let me end 5 o'clock in the morning reading our chapter. Uh, next week at the church. At the church. Doesn't that sound good? At 9.30, there's prayer. And at 9.45 is our Bible study. And 10.25 is our worship and message. For the week, there will be some strict rules that we will be following. I will send you an email this week. What we have to do, we'll be placing the uh, chairs in the church a little differently. But everything will be good. Everybody come, and I'll give you more information how we can all get involved with that. And just a little note to Brianna. If you go in the church, don't be discouraged. It's just the tools that are laying there. We'll have them all cleaned up. So you won't have to look after that. We'll get them all cleaned out of there. Also, I want to thank those that came to help this week. I'm always there. Uh, John Bartley came by. We had a good time. It was warm, though. And uh, Brother Doug came, and we had a good time, and we just sanded and scraped and whatnot. And we are uh, finishing the deck this week. So uh, it's possible that I may go this afternoon after 4 o'clock. I'm not sure, but that's not uh, set in stone. But if not, and we wake up in the morning and the sun is shining, right after 5 at live, uh, live at 5, I'll be leaving here to the, go to the church, finish up the staining while it, before it starts raining. So if anybody can come by, drop by for half an hour or an hour, just come back and come by and say hi. Brother Jim came by, Jim John, she couldn't get much, he's getting his strength back, but came by and said hi, and it was encouraging when someone comes by just to say hi, and they're thinking of us. And don't forget, Wednesday night at 7.30 is our Bible study in English, uh, going through our five chapters, and on Thursday night is our Bible study in French at 6.30, and for the time being, we will still be doing them online. Just a little heads up as we get back into the service and things and the church and things begin to be a little easier. We'll be making a little bit of changes, but everything will be good and for the good. So pray about that, that we all have right direction and know where we're going and know what the Lord wants us to do. We, are, we don't do because there's a schedule. We have to wait on the Lord and see what the Lord wants us to do as we move on in our time. So, before we just got a couple more songs to sing, and then I got a little surprise for you this morning. Let's sing, Alive, 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 Forevermore, My Jesus is Alive. Is your Jesus alive today? Whether you're from church, whether you go to church, whether you, whatever, do you believe in Jesus? And do you believe he's alive? Do you believe he's looking after you? It's a big thing. It's, it's, it's not enough to read your Bible. It's not enough just to believe Jesus is alive. But do you believe He's alive and looking after you? Do you believe your salvation is in Him? So let's sing this song, Alive, Alive, Alive Forevermore. My Jesus is alive. And when we come to that part, my Jesus, those that have the words in front of you that uh, we, said we were able to send them out, emphasize that really strong. He's my Jesus. Let's sing it. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. 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 Alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Alive forevermore. Alive. Alive. Alive forevermore, Jesus is alive. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, my Jesus is 
when I'm leading worship or I choose some of the songs it's usually retro and then I was thinking as I picked out the, this song and uh, that Nikki our son is going to be speaking today and he is young but he likes the old songs some of them too because he used he used to lead worship before in the other church where he's going he and Tanya his wife and, and she always said Nikki picked out the old songs and this is an old one. This is an only, only. I see that Tina is listening way out west, and she'll remember this song. But if you have the words, let's sing it. What a wonderful change in my heart has been wrought. You think that's not an old song? When was the last time you heard the word wrought? Since Jesus came into my heart. But I, I looked at this song, and it just grabbed my heart. Because what a wonderful change. In my heart has Jesus made through the years since he came into my heart. So let's sing it. Hallelujah. Oh, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have life in my soul for which long I have sought. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. From my wandering and going astray, since Jesus came into my heart. And my sins, which were many, are all washed away. Came into my heart, verse 3. I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure, since Jesus came into my heart and no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway obscure since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart floods of joy on my soul like the sea belongs to roll since Jesus came into my heart. There's a light in the valley of death now for me since Jesus came into my heart. And the gates of that city beyond I can see since Jesus came into my heart. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm so happy, so happy as onward I go since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy for my soul, like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. And Lord, we are so thankful and so happy for you today. 
that we can have this privilege, Lord, to worship you and love you and know that you are enjoying our worship and you find pleasure in our faith and our worship today. So, Lord, as we open up now to your word, Lord, let us be attentive and hear what you have for us to hear. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So, without any further delay, I'm going to turn it right over to my son. He'll either stand or sit. That'll be entirely up to him. So, God bless you. Okay, there will be a slight delay as we change what's in front of me. Let me get a place for my Bible. Well, good morning, everybody. For those who haven't heard that, see, I'm maybe off the screen here because I'm standing. But for those who haven't heard that song before, it is old. Even older than some of us. Oh, yeah. But probably straight from the hymnal. If I were in another church, I could probably tell you what number it was, but we're not there. So I'm just trying to get my Bible and my notes in front of me. Adjust the screen. Bring it down some depth. I'm going to sit here because it's easier to see my notes. It's one of those signs you're getting a little bit older. And you need to see your notes. There we go. Hey, morning everybody. How do I look from your point of view? Hopefully half decent. I am awake this morning. Amen. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And good morning, church. Thank you to the Church of Wakefield, Pastor Dave, for giving me the opportunity. It's not often I preach in one language only without a translator. So that the good news on that and possibly the bad news on that is without a translator, it should shorten up my, my message. But because I knew that happened, I added a few extra notes. So it could be good or bad news. That's up to you. But this morning, we're going to look at the good news of the Word of God. Amen. Uh, I got a little bonus feature that doesn't even, uh, I won't even charge you for to hear. Um, when I was asked to speak to the church, this church service this morning online, of course, you're going through your head, what should I preach on? And if anybody knows me, you know that the key thing that I preach on and that, that I straight want to come out of every one of my messages is that, that God loves you, that He is love and He is not uh, ever going to stop loving His children. So as I was, uh, I went to sleep one night and I woke up with a song the next morning on my head. And if we all know 2 Chronicles 7.14, when we first uh, went into quarantine, this was going around a lot. If my people will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn away from their sins, I will heal their land. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. And uh, that verse popped into my head as, as this song, which we're going to go back to. He talked about old songs. This is, this is one I won't sing, I promise. The words are, shut in with God in a secret place, there in the Spirit beholding His face, gaining more power to run in life's race. I long to be shut in with God. And now I took that song, I thought at first I'd be preaching on that, that theme of shutting in with God, but He had other plans. But can I challenge you this week to, in order to get shut in with God, you have to do it on purpose. To take time this week to shut yourself in with God. If it's five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, let him just take time to get one on one with Him because I know He is an answer for your prayer. He is a strength when you're weak, and He's going to be there to touch every need and every um, thing that you have. Amen. I think I lost my cough drops. Well, here we are in the the main part of the message this morning. Uh, I hope that you are, are blessed this Father's Day morning, just like I am. That's right. Here with all the things happening in the world, I use the words happy. I use the words blessed. We sang songs this morning of hope, of inspiration. When the, If we listen to the news or we listen to the reports around us, even people we hang out with, uh, it's easier to worry about the future than to feel blessed. But this morning I, wanted, I want to preach a message that after we can declare the words that no matter what the situation, we can declare, let's just praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands together and praise the Lord. If this morning you have struggles, if this morning you have fears, you're not sure you can say praise the Lord, 
I want this message of hope to turn your hearts to him, to a place where you will remember that no matter what, no matter in what, <coughs> he is with you, he loves you. Uh, it's a simple message. I don't preach uh, deep. Well, I have a couple times, but I'm not a big deep theological kind of person. I just want straight word. I just want straight what comes in the gospel. And this message is simple. It should be simple to remember. When we're thinking of hope, when we're thinking this message of hope, the first thing that we need to know and to realize is that God loves you. John 3, 16 to 18. For those of us who grew up in the church, this is one of those verses, John 3, 16, that every Sunday school class from, from the youngest age to the oldest, uh, you heard it, you memorized it, but did we make it real? And that's, this is one verse we need to make real to us. It reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, one only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son of the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. He sent his son for you and for me because he loved us, because he wanted to be with us. Um, he loves you so much today. The realization, sorry, it's hard. I'm not used to going back and forth here. But you know, he, he loves you today as much as he loved you the first time you said, Lord, come into my heart. 1 John 4, 16. Reads, we know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. For God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Did you hear that? We know how much God love, loves us, because he's come to live in us. Oh, back in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, it says, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Think about that. His love hasn't changed. It didn't change when he was on the cross, when he came. It didn't change that day that you said, Lord, come into my heart. He hasn't changed at all since. How old are you? I'm, I'm bleh, years old. I'm, I'm unofficially 25 years old. So he hasn't changed in the 25 plus years since I started going to church. Amen. You and I, because of this love, he told, tells us in the book of Romans 8.15, Because of this love, we have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. His love brought us in oneness with him. Instead of saying, God, God, where are you? We can now say, Abba, Father. I need you. I've struggled. I I have fear. Help my unbelief. His spirit joins with our spirit. And he affirms, acknowledges that we are his children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. Everything he has is for us. That means all of his love. All of the love that we can only imagine is ours. There's more love than we'll ever need. You are loved today. But can I take a minute to stop here? I don't know who will listen, who has listened, who is listening. But this message isn't just for the believer. It's for the person who hasn't said, Lord, come into my heart. Today is the day of salvation. Romans 10, 13 says, um, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I want to open up the service. I, I like to go early. I've been challenged at times to, to not so much do an altar call, but open it up to you to, to say, Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive me. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. Today I turn from my sins and invite you into my heart, into my life. Help me learn to trust and follow you as my Lord. It's as simple as that if you haven't made a decision for the Lord. 
and just asking him into your life. And today is the best day. Why did I take time to do this? Early in the message, because out of anything I say, the decision to walk for the Lord is the most important decision you will ever have. And there's no need to wait. If you have made that decision at this time, let someone know. That you're your pastor or a pastor, a friend who knows you. That we can walk this life together. That when fears come, we can gain strength in the word together. That's why I like the, the, the live at five when we do them. Uh, if you come together in the mornings, it's for me it's perfect. It's just as I'm getting ready to go to work. But I can come together and read the scripture and it's not just me. It's myself, the pastor who's reading it, certain other people who are on there. We're all coming together. And you know the word says we're two or three are gathered in my name? I don't think it ever says we're two or three are gathered in the same place in my name. Because when we're listening to the scriptures, when you're listening to the message this morning, we're gathered all together in one place. And God is in your home. He's in this home. He's in uh, someone else's home. He is all in one place one place we serve a, a mighty god who loves us so much then as we continue in this message of hope um i always say i'm a math guy so this is my biblical math uh if you know algebra at all you, you're used to all the letters but in my head a plus b plus c equals my position in christ or with christ hebrews 4 14 to 16 tells us where that we can come boldly to the throne room of God. So then since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly into the throne of, his, of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy. We will find grace to help us when we need it most. We come boldly into the throne. That means without hesitation. When you accepted Jesus as, Lord, as, your, as your Savior, you came boldly into the throne room of God and said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. But you know when I read the scriptures around it and I read different other places, I don't remember ever hearing a scripture, and I want to base everything I do on scripture. I don't ever remember hearing scripture saying that we left the throne room of God. We came boldly into the throne room of God, but at what point did we leave the throne room of God? If you have scripture, let me know, because I don't want to speak false, but we are still there with him. And I'm going to go and prove it. But one thing what we see while we're in the mercy in the throne room of God is that we found his mercy and his grace to help us in all of our needs when we came into the throne room of God. They are now inside of his mercy and his grace. He freely gave them to us. So we, as I'm saying, are still in that place. We've never left the throne room of God. Let's add that to Romans 8:34. Where it says, um, Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us. He was raised to life for us. And he's sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. He's defending us. When we come, no matter what we've done, and we say, Lord, forgive me. He's there saying, look, my blood has washed them away. I'm defending them. But with the key thing we see, my B in here is Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. He's seated with God. So A, we've come boldly into the throne room of God where Jesus is seated with God defending me. Verse 35 tells, tells us that there's nothing that can separate us from his love. That's what he's telling. That I've given them my love and we are together. We are one. Then we add that to the book of Ephesians. The second chapter. The fourth verse. Where it says, But God is so... Uh, yeah, 
But God is so rich in mercy, and He loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. Do you see where we are? We've come boldly into the throne room of God where Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And this tells us that he seated us next to him. So where are we? Where is our position? We are there with God. We are there walking with Him, talking with Him. We are seated with Him. The message of hope is simple, that we are not alone. If we go back to Psalm 23, and we're talking about being seated with the Father, we can read that whole chapter, and it reminds us of how much He loves us. It starts off with, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The loving Father gives us all that we need. He lets me rest in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He renews my strength. He is our strength where we are. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor my name. Even though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I will not fear no I will fear no evil. For you are close beside me. No matter where you are, what you're going through. His word says that you won't go it alone because you are, he is close beside me. Your rod and your staff, they protect and they comfort me. When we're taking time to be with God, we're going to listen to his voice. And when he says to go left, we're going to go left. Why? Because he knows the safest route. He knows the path we're supposed to be on. And he's not let us alone to say, here, go on your own. Even when we step out, he's there saying, come, come. But I always love verse 5. It says, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of your enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. He prepares a table for you and for me. At that table is everything we would need. In this time of strife, in this time of sickness, his love is at the table. His joy is at the table. His peace is at the table. It's all there for you. But have you ever invited someone to your home and you put the food on the table and you, they're at your home and they're standing beside the table and you say, look, there it is. Well, let's go outside. No, you turn around and say, come, sit down. And we're staying in the line with these old songs. The song, Come and Dine, the Master Calleth. Come and Dine. Oh. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude, turned the water into wine, calls you. Come and dine. There is plenty. There is more than enough for every one of us who believed on his name. His love, verse 6 tells us, Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me. There's so much love that it's falling all around us. It's coming after. That's hope to know that his love is pursuing me. Even when you think you're alone, Romans 8.35 tells us that nothing will ever separate us because we are seated with him. Sickness won't separate us. Uh, pain won't separate us. Poverty doesn't separate us. It's at those times when we realize that he is always with us, that we can have hope in the message. Even if you fall and think you failed him too much, can I tell you that he's looking for you? Luke 15, or maybe it's Luke 5, I gotta check. My notes are a little off on that. It's the story, a parable that Jesus gave about the sheep. And they go to Luke 5, 3 to 7. I think it's 15. No, nope, let's overlook 15. Verse 3 talks about a man who had a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost. What will he do? Does he not leave the ninety and the nine others in the wilderness and go to search for the one 
that is lost until he finds it. And when he's found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he calls his friends and neighbors and said, Let's celebrate, for this one that was lost has now been found. You might think you've gone too far, but I'm here to tell you the scripture says he's looking for you. He didn't run away from the 99. They're still under his protection. They're still under his love. But he cares for you so much that he wants you to reach out to him. And when you say, Lord, I'm here. Can you picture a lost sheep and the shepherd's going around looking for this sheep? Is he just looking with his eyes? He's listening. He's listening for the sound of the sheep, for the ba. When he hears it, he goes in that direction. Jesus is just listening for you to say, Lord, I'm here. Help me. I need more of you. And he reaches out his arms. He picks you up. He comforts you. And he carries you back to the fold. He knows where you are. He's just waiting for you. When we don't know what to say, when we don't know where to go or how the next step, maybe fear is coming in and you don't know what to do. James 1.5 tells us that if you need wisdom, ask God and he will give it to you. That sounds like a promise to me. I may have to wait a little bit, but his answer is coming because I've asked him. I've seen it in my life where times fear has come in. And you have a choice. You can either say, oh, if, if only, if I only I did this, if only... Or you can sit down and say, Lord, I have all these thoughts going through my head. But I know that you are here with me. I need your help and your guidance. And I, can I tell you, he's listening. I picture times when you're trying to get your little child to, to sleep. And they won't sleep. And I remember as, in younger days, I used to sit by, by, the, by the bed and tell a story until my daughter fell asleep. What was I doing? I was there giving her confidence. I was there showing her I was there with her. I don't have to do that anymore because she knows. She has confidence that I will always be there with her. But back then I was just listening for when she needed help. And I was there just so she could look up. Half the time I was asleep while she was sitting there. But God's like that. He's just waiting on us. He won't force us to do things. But when we call on his name and say, Lord, direct my path. He is always listening. Hope is knowing that we are loved. Hope is knowing that we are never alone. But you know there's something else that I'm hoping for? It starts in John 14. Jesus was preparing his disciples to go away. And no matter how bad the situation here gets, this is where my ultimate hope is in. He says, there's more. He said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is no, more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I'm going. He is gone. Jesus left this earth. But he's gone to prepare a home for you and for me. He's coming back. Acts 1.11 says, I was going to find it. That men of Galilee, they said, what the... Uh, Jesus is left in the cloud and uh, people were looking up to see where he went and angels came and they said men of Galilee he said why are you standing here staring into heaven Jesus has been taken from you into heaven but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go that's what I'm looking for I don't know <clears throat> excuse me I don't know how many times I've driven in the car and looked up to the clouds and There'll be a little break in the clouds, and I look and think, could he be coming on that beam? I'm looking forward to him coming back. 
that's where I put my hope in knowing that he loves me so much that he's not just leaving me here. He sent the Holy Spirit to live with me, but then one day he's coming back. 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 says, uh, For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice from, of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth, will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. There's words he said, I'm coming back to get you. Those are words of encouragement, of excitement. Those are words to be happy for. But did you read verse 18? It says, so encourage each other in these words. What words are we encouraging each other in? We're encouraging each other in the words that he is coming back for us, for his church. I don't know about you, but I am looking forward to that wonderful day. It doesn't matter what our neighbors say, what our co-workers say, what the news says. My hope is in his return for me, and I'm ready to fly. When he returns and calls us home to be with him, Revelation 21, 1 to 4 tells us there will be no more crying, no more tears. Oh, let me add that there will be no more sickness, no more fears. There will be no racism, no violence. Only God's love will exist in heaven. Heaven, happy home above. Heaven, land of peace and love. Can't you wait to be there? In this time when the enemy tries to convince us that we need to fear, with a loud voice, we need to proclaim Romans 8.37 that despite everything else, I have overwhelming victory. It is mine through Jesus who loves me. I am victorious. You and I have been given what the world wants. When Jesus left, he told the disciples, <coughs> <coughs> The Holy Spirit is coming, and when he comes, he's going to bring you a gift, peace of mind. It's up to us to let his light shine to a world in need of God's love. I don't know if I'm passing this back to you, Pastor. Yep. Today, we have hope, and it's in our hope is in knowing that God loves us. It's in knowing that God will never leave us alone. It's in knowing that God is coming back for his church. A church without spot or wrinkle. Let it be our goal this week to spread this hope to the world that needs him. We are his light. Amen. I'll pass it back to the pastor. <laughs> to close. But just remember, this is a happy Father's Day. We are blessed and we are loved. Amen. Thank you, Nikki. So as we finish our service today, and we're just looking forward to this next week, I always, when I listen to the guys preach, whether it's uh, Nikki or whether it's Yannick or whoever's preaching, I always take some nuggets out of it. And I was thought I would leave you with this uh, thought this morning. Uh, Nikki was talking about telling a, a Bible or telling a story to his daughter when she was little. What would you think to have Jesus come and sit down on the side of your bed and tell you a story before you go to sleep? You say, Pastor, is that possible? Think about it. Think about it. He's our Father. So as we finish this week, keep your eye on your emails, keep your ear to the ground, as they say, and as the news goes on as we're opening. God bless you today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being attentive. Thank you for putting the Word of God into practice. Have a great day. Have a great Father's Day. 
Have a great week, and God bless you in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.